The city was aglow as twilight descended. Streaks of saffron and violet slowly consumed by the encroaching obsidian darkness. Standing amidst the urban humdrum was the illustrious Langdon Tower, a symphony of glass and steel reaching up towards the star-studded expanse. This ten-floor marvel of modern architecture had been my professional domicile for the last six years. I worked as an IT consultant for a successful tech firm, perched within the tower's concrete veins. My day revolved around the predictability of a meticulously planned routine. The comfort of the known was an ally in the fast-paced chaos of the tech industry. Every morning, I'd find myself in the elevator, my fingers habitually brushing against the cold metallic buttons as they instinctively sought out the ten. My cubicle on the tenth floor was a fortress of solitude, sheltering me from the pandemonium of incessant phone calls and rattling keyboards. That evening, though, was different. I found myself staying behind, caught in the vice of a deadline. The floor was deserted. The once lively office rendered a silent mausoleum under the sterile glow of fluorescent lights. A hushed breeze whistled through the vents, setting a chilling cadence in the solitude. Long past midnight, weary and drained, I trudged wearily towards the elevators, my shoulders heavy with exhaustion. As I waited for the elevator, the tower seemed to be holding its breath, an overarching sentinel brooding in the quiet night. The familiar ding echoed through the lobby as the elevator doors slid open. My weary reflection stared back from the polished metal interior, distorted by the cold industrial surface. The usually comforting hum of the elevator car seemed oddly intrusive in the late night stillness, a metallic dirge accompanying my descent. With the weight of the day pressing down on me, I found myself leaning against the elevator control panel, my gaze idly surveying the buttons. It was then that an oddity grabbed my attention. An additional button. A button for the eleventh floor. What the hell? I thought to myself. It was a button for a floor that didn't exist. The sterile glow of the overhead lights played tricks on the metallic surface, making the eleven gleam ominously. My mind spun, struggling to make sense of this anomaly. Had the button always been there? Escaping my attention and the drudgery of my routine? Or had it appeared suddenly, an uninvited guest intruding on my day to day? My heart pounded a chaotic rhythm as my hand, seemingly with a will of its own, reached towards the button. As my finger hovered, a shiver of apprehension came over me. The world held its breath, suspended in the moment. The eerie silence of the night seemed to tighten around me turning the benign elevator car into a claustrophobic trap. An irrational fear gripped me, my instincts blaring chemical warnings throughout my body, as if to warn me of an impending danger. In a sudden burst of rationality, I withdrew my hand, pressing the button for the ground floor instead. As the elevator hummed its descent, the reflected image of the eleventh floor button glowed ominously in the metallic doors, an enigma burning in the back of my mind. The following day dawned, its familiar rhythms jarred by the lingering shadow of the previous night's discovery. My typically uneventful morning, teeth brushed, tie knotted, and coffee brewed, was consumed by an uncharacteristic disquiet. An itch had settled in the passageways of my mind, an obsession woven with the threads of curiosity. The eleventh floor, a deviation from my mundane reality, had begun to exert an irresistible interest. My daily commute to work, usually filled with podcasts or ambient city sounds, was instead dominated by a symphony of silent speculation. Was I imagining things? Would the button still be there? As the towering Langdon structure came into view, its imposing silhouette seemed to whisper a beckoning call. 
entering the building, the air felt electric, like the silent seconds before a storm. In the elevator, I found myself alone, a rare occurrence in the always buzzing hive of tech innovation. As the metallic door slid shut, surprise came over me as I saw the 11th floor button glowing with a teasing allure, like a forbidden fruit dangling within arm's reach. The button seemed less sinister in the morning's comforting glow, more curiosity than menace. My reflection, usually composed and solid, looked ethereal against the reflective elevator interior. I reached out, my fingers trembling with a blend of trepidation and excitement. In the pit of my stomach, a foreboding sense of wrongness churned. I hesitated. My reflection looked back at me, eyes wide with the same mingling of curiosity and fear. It was as though we were two halves of the same entity, two sides of a coin teetering on the edge of a fateful decision. After what felt like an eternity, my finger made contact with the button. The immediate sensation was one of both relief and apprehension. Relief that I had acted, and apprehension at the inevitable unknown that loomed. As the elevator began to ascend, I felt a wave of vertigo. The fluorescent lights flickered momentarily, casting eerie shadows in the cramped space. My heart thudded against my ribcage, each beat resonating with the humming elevator cables pulling me upwards. When the elevator bell finally chimed, its ding echoed ominously. I realized I had been holding my breath. My skin tingled with the expectation of uncharted territory, the thrill of stepping into a world that was not meant to be. As the doors parted, I braced myself. While part of me was hoping for something strange and exotic, in my heart of hearts, I expected something completely mundane. Not for a moment did I expect to find what was waiting for me in the recesses of the 11th floor. After the door opened, I found myself robotically crossing the threshold. I was shocked by what I saw, an uncanny world that had been sketched out with the charcoal remnants of my reality, yet colored outside the lines. My ordinary office setup, the carefully arranged furniture, the intimate arrangement of cubicles, all were present, but distorted as if reflected in a funhouse mirror. I stepped further into this twisted realm. My footfall swallowed in the eerie silence. The carpet under my feet felt coarse, unlike the plush texture I was used to on the 10th floor. The familiar white walls bore an ashen hue, while the usual ambient hum of air conditioning was replaced by a heavy stillness, broken only by my ragged breaths reverberating in the quiet. A semblance of my cubicle sat against the wall, an eerie doppelganger of my professional life. The desk, usually clean and organized, was in disarray. The monitor toppled over, keyboard keys strewn about like scattered pebbles. Post-it notes bearing my handwriting clung desperately to the edges of the desk, their cheerful yellow hues replaced by a sickly green. The office windows that usually offered a panoramic view of the bustling cityscape instead revealed an inverted reality. Skyscrapers stood defiantly upside down, piercing the ground while their roots grazed in the starless sky. Cars drove along invisible roads, their headlights casting an eerie glow on the inverted buildings. Despite the unsettling scenery, there was an intoxicating allure to this abnormal world. It was like walking into a painting, the surreal strokes of an artist running wild. I found myself entranced, the seductive rhythm of this macabre dance pulling me deeper into its embrace. The thrill of the uncanny, the terrifyingly beautiful had me entranced. I was Alice, tumbled into a hauntingly familiar wonderland, yet within this fascination, my grip on reality began to slip. The inverted world began seeping into my consciousness, a dark ink marring my mental canvas. I started conversing with the phantasmic silence, whispering secrets into the ghostly echoes of forgotten conversations. 
My fingers trace the imprints of phantom keyboard keys, my eyes drinking in the jarring sight of the upside down world outside. Time felt fluid, slipping through my fingers like sand. The hands of my wristwatch wove a capricious dance, sometimes running backward, sometimes standing still. Strangely, there was a disquieting familiarity about the 11th floor, an echo of my reality that vibrated with every skewed detail. I was like a phantom, drifting through a mirror image of my daily existence, but it was a mirror that twisted and contorted, a haunting caricature of my world. My fascination with the uncharted territory soon gave birth to an unforeseen specter, my reflection. It was in the polished surface of an overturned coffee mug that I first saw him. He stared back at me, a monstrous shadow of the man I knew myself to be. Where my eyes were a soft hazel, his were a piercing green, glowing with an unholy light. His hair was unkempt, wild locks playing in every direction. A coarse stubble peppered his face creating a stark contrast against this pale, almost translucent skin. This disheveled version of me bore a manic expression, a mixture of fear, fascination, and a hint of madness. Was this me? Is this me? Am I real or is he? With each encounter with this twisted doppelganger, I felt a profound connection with him. It was as though the veil between the 10th and 11th floor versions of me was dissolving, our identities bleeding into each other. I was this man in the reflection, as much as he was me. We shared the same fears, the same morbid curiosity. His eyes bore the same haunted look that I felt growing within me. The office was a terrifying carnival of distorted images. I saw my reflection in the glossy surface of an inverted mirror, in the window panes that displayed the bizarre cityscape, and even in the ripples of coffee that seemed to flow upward from a toppled mug. Every encounter with my grotesque double sent jolts of dread coursing through my veins, yet it was impossible to look away. I began to feel less like a visitor from the real world, and more like an inhabitant of this parallel nightmare. The world outside my office, with its predictable rhythm and mundane regularity, seemed like a distant dream. This reality began eroding my sanity, replacing my logical thought process with a morbid fascination. I was spiraling down a rabbit hole, losing grip on the threads of rationality. I was the man in the reflection, entrapped in a distorted shadow of my world. As I continued my exploration of the 11th floor, my consciousness seemed to fracture further, splintering into shards of disjointed reality. My physical self remained anchored in this twisted dimension. My mind, however, oscillated between realms, adrift in the domain of the bizarre, tethered to the remnants of the familiar. My perception warped under the gravity of this place, the office space, while a reflection of my professional environment started to unveil layers of deeper distortions. An upside-down clock ticked away the minutes in an arrhythmic melody. Time, no longer a linear stream, but a whirlpool of chaotic moments. My cubicle, a once humble workspace, had mutated into a labyrinth of impossible geometries. The sense of sound, too, was awry. The silence I had initially found oppressive gave birth to phantasmal echoes, the disconnected rhythms of a keyboard, the soft murmur of conversations that never occurred, the whirring of the photocopier churning out invisible documents. My name seemed to hang in the air, a disembodied whisper twirling in the silence. Walking through this maze of distortions, I became a prisoner of my own reflection. My doppelganger appeared in every mirrored surface, his wild eyes peering into my soul, our shared madness growing. He existed wherever I existed. He beckoned me, 
luring me further into the heart of this new reality. Each step I took echoed in his world. The line between us, already blurred, began to dissolve. Was I somehow now just a reflection of him? The thought unsettled me, and I felt the last vestiges of my sanity begin to slip. The more I descended into the surreal madness, the more the tenth floor reality seemed like an unreachable dream. This floor was my world now, a nightmarish reality that swallowed me whole. In this eerie echo chamber, the laws of physics and reason became redundant. I was losing myself in a world where time flowed backward, and reality was merely a distorted reflection. The transition was terrifying yet fascinating, a journey that propelled me further down the rabbit hole. Each moment spent on the eleventh floor ensured my immersion to this inverted reality, pushing me closer to the precipice of insanity. I felt a profound disconnection from the man I used to be. The predictable IT professional of the tenth floor seemed a distant figment, a persona forgotten. The eleventh floor had seduced me with its haunting allure, entrapping me within its maddening walls. It was an intoxicating paradox. Familiar yet alien, the world around me breathed and pulsated as if it were alive, its heartbeat resonating with the chaotic rhythm of my own. My cubicle, once a static construct of the mundane, had morphed into a shifting maze of distorted architecture. The computer monitor floated in a void of its own, its screen an obsidian canvas for my chaotic thoughts. The toppled coffee mug poured out an endless stream of viscous darkness, trickles crawling upwards against the pull of gravity. Every mirrored surface held the gaze of my distorted reflection, our identities converging. His manic grin mirrored my own distorted sense of exhilaration. We were two facets of the same existence, a broken mirror reflecting a distorted image of the same man. My reality was now firmly rooted in this floor that should not exist. This floor had dissolved my grip on sanity, washing away my connection to the rational world. I was spiraling, free-falling into the embrace of insanity, the ground beneath my feet giving away to the dizzying abyss. But there was a perverse sense of liberation in this madness, a breaking of chains if you will. The eleventh floor was not just a mirrored world. It was a doorway into the depths of my own psyche, a voyage into the sea of the subconscious. The world outside Langdon Tower, with its predictability and order, seemed like a far-off dream as I plunged deeper into the chaos of my mirrored reality. The rhythmic beat of the clock, my temporal anchor in the tempest of the eleventh floor, ceased its steady progression, the hand spasming in erratic bursts. It was as if time itself had finally succumbed to the madness, renouncing its control over the skeletal framework of reality. My past, my present, and my future each seemed to bleed into the other, painting a surreal tapestry of my existence. Around me, the office space kept evolving into an abyss of disarray. Cubicles warped into grotesque shapes, their geometric rigidity replaced by organic undulations. Inanimate objects sprung to life, floating in the air, defying the laws of gravity. The spectral voices grew louder, my name morphing into an incantation echoed across the warped dimensions of the floor. I found my own voice joining the cacophony, an involuntary call that rang out, resonating with the echoes of my name. It was a mournful cry, a plea to the madness. Yet, there was a twisted undertone of ecstasy. I no longer sought an escape. The idea of returning to the reality of the tenth floor felt foreign, a tether severed by the chaos around me. I reveled in the disorder, the warped reflection of my existence, the thrill of unpredictability. The familiar comforts of my previous life seemed bland in comparison to the intoxicating allure of this gnarled reality. My reflection, my warped doppelganger, grinned back at me, a grotesque mirror of my surrender. 
as I lost myself in the depths of my new world, I accepted my role in this twisted performance. My reflection merged into me. His wild eyes, the windows into our shared insanity became my own. His spectral presence became my physicality, the final shackle linking me to this chaotic realm. We were one and the same, an embodiment of a man unmade and reforged by the madness of the eleventh floor. The spectral voices echoing my name crescendoed into a resounding chant, an invocation calling forth my complete immersion into this new reality. The floor was acknowledging my transformation, welcoming me into its fold with a tumultuous serenade. Outside, the city, the once bustling metropolis of order and predictability, was nothing more than an inverted illusion. In this surreal theater, I had taken center stage. My sanity, once a defense against the terror of the unknown, was now a relic of the past, crushed under the weight of the eleventh floor's absurdity. The man of reason, the rational professional from the tenth floor, was a ghostly memory, a faded echo drowned in the maelstrom of my new reality. As the final vestiges of my old self dissipated, I surrendered to the embrace of the eleventh floor, the mirrored realm that had become my home. In the heart of the chaos, I stood, a king in the realm of madness, my reflection my crown. I was the denizen of this upside down reality, the ruler my inverted world. So my advice to you is, if you see an extra button show up on your elevator, press it.